This tutorial will cover the basics of Seed or Suppression of Enemy Air Defences. It will cover the Sidearm, AGM-122A, the DECM pod and how to use the RWR. The defensive electronic countermeasure pod is mounted underneath the belly of the aircraft. It can be mounted at the same time as the gun if you wish. It provides jamming on two bands, both the pulse jamming and continuous wave jamming. This is your primary electronic warfare unit. Next up we have the RWR. This is a passive sensor, it will listen for radar contacts and report them on your display. Be aware that it cannot see directly upwards or down. So if you turn your belly toward a SAM threat while turning away from it, it is entirely possible it could launch on you and you will not get receive a single warning. The sidearm is a radiation seeking missile based on the AIM-9 Sidewinder. It has a maximum range of approximately 8.9 miles which means you will often be attacking within the engagement range of any advanced SAM systems. It locks onto the strongest radar signal it can find, which means you can't necessarily choose your target. It also provides you no range information. So now we are in the cockpit, we can have a look at the systems available to us. We can start by going to the Electronic Warfare page. This displays our RWR, our Radar Warning Receiver. Inside here you can see various objects, these are radar emitters, so this is an F-18, this is a Hawk sight, an early warning, and an AWACS. The various symbols indicate what they are, for example this chevron is an airborne target, this is the primary threat, and these are ground, currently not a threat. You can see these rings, these indicate how close they are to being in range to attack you. If you ever have an aircraft or SAM sight within this inner ring, or worse yet, in the middle, there is a very very high chance they will shoot at you soon, if not immediately. To our right, we have a selection of options including the bit test, primary and offset, these are completely unfunctional. To the left we have the chaff counter and the flare counter, as you can see there. In addition to that the RWR will broadcast out to you sounds indicating what is happening. They include a new contact sound and the radar spike. Remember that the RWR displays contacts relative to your aircraft. For example, if there is an aircraft at 3 o'clock on the display, you can expect to find it to your right wing. I will provide a link in the description that shows you the legend for the RWR, including all the various threats in greater detail. Be aware the RWR does not include a missile warning system, that means you will not be told if there is a missile launch on you. This includes IR missiles and radar missiles, however radar missiles will, will be accompanied with a spike, which you can usually use to determine if you've been launched upon. Next up we have the ECM pod itself, these controls are here. Under the ECM panel we have off, standby, this will enable and warm up the pod, however it will not emit anything. The built-in test, not implemented. RCV mode. This is a smart standby mode. It will simply listen out for threats and then engage the appropriate jammer as and when it feels necessary. And finally we have RPT. In this mode the jammer is set to on and will run continuously. If you want to check the status of jamming you can check on the advisory panel down here. You can see that pulse jamming and continuous wave jamming are currently active. In addition to that we have the jammer hot warning. This will appear if your jammer has been on for too long and is overheating. CW no go and P no go for pulse and continuous wave no go. These imply that either your jamming pod has stopped functioning or you do not have one mounted and you have attempted to switch it on. Finally we have the threat warning panel on the right. Here we can see the various types of threats including SAM, CW, AI and AAA. These will light up corresponding to the threats that are locking up you with radar. The ECM makes it more difficult for radars to perform a lock on you. It also reduces the amount of information they have on you. For example, it can reduce their ability to range you, which will affect the time they launch their missile. It will not protect you completely, just makes it more difficult to engage you. Be aware that the sidearm does have a few bugs in early access at the moment. First being, if you turn it on, sometimes it will not lock. Turn it back off again, turn it back on and hope for the best. This goes for the digital display selections which may or may not work. 
sometimes they will work, sometimes they won't. If you miss, I won't fire. Just toggle them off, toggle them back on again. So the first thing you'll notice is the tone. It will display this tone to indicate it is seeking, much like a Sidewinder missile does. When searching for a target, it's best to slowly slide your nose across the general areas you think the SAMs are. It has a fairly wide range. There you go, it's found something. Now it's locked. So that first tone you heard was the sidearm has found something and is preparing to lock. And this tone that you can now hear is the locking tone. So you can see the crosshair is also bugged and it appears beneath the target. If I point my velocity vector onto it, that's the actual target there. And the crosshair is locked onto the ground for whatever reason. Ignore that, it has actually locked onto the correct target. Next, you can hear if you listen carefully that the audio is stuttering. This is currently another bug. The best way to fix this is to simply deselect your missile and reselect it, and it will function properly again. In order to use the sidearm, you must have the IR cool switch enabled and allow time for the sensor to cool down. This does not currently appear to be modelled, but remember it for future. So let's put that all into practice. So I will start up my ECM to RCV mode. So you can see it is currently jamming on the P. We currently have a S and an 8. So it's an SA8 and an early warning radar. I'm switch up my volume. Put my weapons panel, master arm on, air to ground, select my weapons. Remember the selector over here does not work for whatever reason. Same goes for the stores page. So ensure you use this. If you cannot manage to fire your missiles, try turning them off and back on again. Oops, we already have a lock. We have a SAM threat, constant wave, continuous wave even. You can see the crosshair is not actually on target, it's dropped a long way off where it should be. I believe that's just early access kind of thing. Really the crosshair should be about here, which is where the SAM site actually is. So if I pull the trigger to, right, to uh, launch it, is that Magnum? There's my missile. Here comes his, so I'm going to break to the right. I'm going to start dropping chaff. Change my axes. Roll back up. That one's still tracking. It stopped. And the SAM site, from the looks of it, has been hit. Let's confirm that. So yes, the SA8 is, SA is now gone. You can see the smoke cloud from him. Now I need to deselect and reselect my sidearms, as you can hear if you listen. The sound is stuttering and they're currently bugged. So deselect them, reselect them, and you're good to go again for your next attack. So you can see again the crosshair is off. We'll ignore that. Magnum. One less radar. So remember, wait for the sidearm to change to the locked tone. You may hear a short, higher pitch tone beforehand, which indicates that it is seeking, then you will hear a lock at which point you can launch your missile.